What's going on print fam? I'm Cam, the t-shirt printer. Today I'm going to show you how to build this single color press for less than 30 bucks. You can build a t-shirt printing press for less than 30 bucks. Let's do this. And this bad boy will produce print results just as good as any manual print shop can. Alrighty, now let's talk about the supplies you're gonna need to build this press. Uh, there's barely any. Uh, 25 by 25 piece of Formica does not need to be laminated. You can get laminated if you want, but that costs more. Uh, a two by four, I just have a scrap one here. It's all beat to crap, but it'll work. You're also gonna need a two by six as straight as possible. Drill screws. Your jiffy clamps, two of them, 10 bucks on Amazon, and like a tape measure or preferably a T-square to get straighter cuts. And no matter what project you're gonna get involved in, if you don't have the tools needed to build it, you're gonna have to be resourceful. Resourcefulness is the number one skill as a small business or a large business owner, resourcefulness. So if you're looking to get started in the t-shirt printing business, go ahead and punch that thumbs up. We gotta get to at least a thousand likes on this video. And if we do, I'm gonna upload a very special print technique video just for you guys so that you can get started like a pro. All right, so this piece of Formica is uh, 24 by 25. So I'm gonna cut it widthwise to 14 inches. You can go wider if you want to. It's completely up to you. <laughs> Take this thing outside and cut it down. Imagine that this is going to be our pallet arm. The end of the pallet arm to about seven inches down from the pallet here. And then just imagine we're going to make two feet, kind of like a double cross here and here. And we're going to cut both of these legs at 16 inches. I'm gonna cut the pallet arm at 33. All right, and I do have a little question for you. What areas of the print process are you getting stuck or what's you know, what's holding you back from moving forward or from getting started? Let me know in the comments, no judgment. If anyone's a shit about it, I'll delete the comment right away. Uh, but I, I wanna know so that I can, so that I have a good grasp on what kind of content I need to make for you guys moving forward. I was being an idiot, I didn't think it through. When the screen is on here, there's bunching that happens so that you can't lower the screen down on it because the shirt's bunched up right here. Uh, so you need to create some separation. So all I've done, I've drawn two lines, I'm gonna cut this slot out so that the jiffy clamps are on the back piece of wood and then there will be a gap and then the pallet on the other half. That way the shirt can fall in the gap and we're good to go. So first thing I'm doing, drawing a line just so I know where my pallet's gonna go. And then I'm adjusting the depth of my drill bit so that I can drill through the two by six and then halfway into the pallet itself. You don't wanna drill directly into the pallet because it'll push the wood through and the screws will show through the other side. So I'm drilling through the two inches and then halfway in to the pallet, and I'm gonna do it one more time. And my ridiculous hair is in the way, so you can't see what's going on, but use your imagination. Now I'm reaming out the holes here, a little reamy ream. We just don't want the, the screws to, we want them to turn freely in there. I'm using my T-square to line the pallet arm up, and then I clamp it down on the pallet so it stays put. And now I'm drilling the screws through, and big old head's in the way. What I did with these screws is they're regular old drywall screws, but I measured them and cut them to where they uh, just go halfway through the, the pallet. Okay, now I'm lining up the backboard where the jiffy clamps, jiffy clamps are gonna go. Okay, and then I'm just drilling it down in one spot here, and then I actually attach the jiffy clamps to the screen. Again, you can barely see it. And then I'm just lining everything up. And then once I get it lined up, I use a T-square to make sure it's straight. And drilly, 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 and we win. 
Now I clamp it down to the back of my table, put my clamp there so the squeegee holds up, and I'm just checking to make sure that it will index and stay up. And now we load the shirt and blah, blah, blah. Look at that, it works like a charm, we fixed it. The next thing I'm doing here is uh, throwing some palleted, uh, pallet tape on. Pallet, gap for the shirt, same size board with the jiffy hinges mounted to that so that it's getting the same height. The jiffy clamps will already give a little bit of off contact, but at the end here, I'm just gonna put a quarter and uh, that'll give me all I need. I do wanna make note too, if you're making one of these presses, round this corner off here as much as possible, round this corner, this corner, and this corner. Get a good uh, arc to it, so that way the, the shirts aren't as likely to catch, because right now I'm having a bit of an issue loading these. And another thing is if you feel the shirt catching on the sides, you need to do, do a better job of sanding the edges of the pallet. Get it loaded. Let's do an index. I'm gonna do a flood. Just a decent pull. So that was my first pull, and you can see how all the little dots held in the mesh. That's not what we want. We're trying to get rid of that, and you do that by a second pass. And a nice, slow, even pull. I'm trying to follow the same path that I did the first time. And you see after I did the second pass, you see how all the plastisol has cleared out of the mesh? That means we've cleared it. That is a good first hit. Alrighty, and now that the press is built, uh, I'm gonna link the playlist up here in the corner. It'll also be linked in the description of this video. In this playlist, I show you how to produce a very professional print with this press. I also show you how to build an exposure unit for almost free so that you can make screens just like this from home without any special equipment. I also have a lot of other really useful videos in that playlist, so go on over to that playlist, watch every video, and make sure to like and comment on every one of those videos.